What's up, guys, and welcome to One Take. Tonight, we're talking about Westworld Season 3, Episode 5, titled Genre. This video will, of course, be full of spoilers, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, do that, and then check out this video. I'm Gil, talking to my tech guy slash brother, Alun. Yo. And, of course, my good friend, Jeremy. Hello. And tonight, we're going to do a slightly different format than what we've been doing the last few episodes. This will be our instant take. We'll give our immediate thoughts and reactions to the episode that we all just watched. And later in the week, we'll do a full recap, scene-by-scene -scene breakdown and analysis. With that, let's jump into tonight's episode. First off, Jeremy, just high level, what did you think of this episode? Um, there, was, there was certainly was some stuff that I enjoyed, so I do not want to bury the lead, but I will say this was probably was my least favorite episode of this season uh so far for some stuff that we can we can hit on along the way um i definitely still liked it but uh, like we got little bits of good bigger picture westworld stuff but there was some smaller stuff that made it seem uh i don't know it was it was weird but there were I, the, the, including the genre thing i thought mm -hmm. was a slightly weird um season but still overall enjoyable and, and certainly no shortage of things to uh to talk about Right. And I think I think I, I think I may have liked the episode more than you did based off what you just said, but I can definitely see where you're coming from. Tonally, it was a really weird episode. It was sort of all over the place. And of course, there was the in-story explanation, the genre drug that Caleb was on. But there were a few other things besides that. Specifically, I think some of the um, flashbacks that happened in the episode around what's his name? Sirach. That's some of that was a little bit weak. We'll get into that. But the uh, the genre stuff I actually liked. I thought it was the uh, the jarring aspect of the episode. I actually thought worked pretty well. When it's going to the black and white or like a, a Sin City yeah. sort of situation. Um, and I think also for that part of it, it sort of established that it kept cutting back and forth between a more um, objective view and then Caleb's view, which was crazy altered. But I'm not sure I noticed that as much in the like genres after that other than the very over the top slow-mo like when Dolores is um you know machine gunning which was cool there was right. a lot of cool visuals it did provide a lot of cool stuff in general I think that's a really interesting premise but it just felt like a weird one-off like a um uh what's the uh Jason Statham movie where that he has to like yeah like <laughs> that kind of a thing you know where it was like a very interesting premise for an action type movie but it just felt weird in the middle of it. Um, but it definitely gave us some good moments. Uh, we saw Marshawn Lynch again coming back, which he was great as his shirt had more stuff on it. That was cool. I was all mm -hmm. about that. There was just a lot of, I don't know, maybe slightly more corny than usual things, which I get that can be written off under the umbrella of this like genre altering drug, mm -hmm. but it was a little weird. And I also think it's like another layer on top of like, we're like, are we in a simulation? Is everyone a host? Also, there are drugs that also alter you. Like it was, it was just a lot of things going on at the same time, which is uh, m most of the time what I like about the show. Maybe this time was a little bit too much, but um, I don't know. Yeah, no, it was definitely jarring. And to your point, what they, it's almost like they could have done even more with genre. The first thing that hit him, it went black and white, sort of noir. It sounded like thirties paranoia type music. And then really the, the rest of the times that came on, it was just sort of slow-mo and a different piece of score, different piece of music, with the exception maybe of the love theme, which was pretty hilarious. And when he had the techno thing going on, you had more emphasis in the flashing lights. But putting the genre aspect of this episode aside, there was a pretty crazy thing that happened this episode. Pretty shocking that this happened five episodes into the season rather than in the season finale, but Dolores showed everyone on the planet, I presume, at least anybody that has a smartphone, a, all of their files from Insight. So they see their past, their present, and their future projections. So first off, crazy that this happened at this point in the season. I love the fact that I could see this as the final scene in a movie with this premise. You have a dystopian future where everyone's futures are charted for them, and the movie ends when the main character breaks into the system and shows everybody what's going on. End credits. But here, we still got three episodes to go, so I love the fact that we're still going to get to see the aftermath of all this. So, Jeremy, I guess two questions. One, what was your reaction to seeing this huge reveal? And second, how did you like the way it played out in this episode 
with the uh, string quartet rendition of uh, Bowie's Space Oddity. Yeah, um, I the music was cool. I, I think it was a little more like on the nose identifiable than a lot of the other pop songs that they sometimes um, do in these. Like this was ba- basically you get three notes in and you're like, oh man, it's Bowie. It was still it was still very cool. Mm-hmm. Provided some cool moments. Um, I will say the idea that it got released, that she let everyone in the entire world, that kind of furthered me to think that maybe what we were looking at was something that was inside of a uh, of a projection or, or a simulation, uh, you know, a, a, a Rehoboam kind. simulation, because it just seemed not that other extreme things haven't happened in this show, but that was so extreme that it seems like this is going to be, you know, we're all leading up to... Uh, what what Ciroc is showing Bernard will happen if he doesn't do the right, you know, something something uh, to that effect. But it was a cool moment, very obviously reminiscent of um, in, in season one when the uh, uh, reveries become unlocked for all the hosts and everyone can kind of see everything and hit this next level. I did think it was it was almost a little comical but also seemed real how how quickly it played out like everyone gets these alerts on their cell phones and instantly there's a couple arguing about like no i need to see your phone and some other guy is pissed that the it says that he's a uh he's an a-hole or, or, <laughs> that's right uh, our language thing is on here uh there, there was a lot of cool moments um that it provided like that oh but i totally agree with you it, it definitely felt like that could have been a a finale type world sweeping change which again maybe leads me to believe that it maybe didn't actually happen but i don't know I, the reveries thing actually happened so who knows yeah and uh i thought they did a pretty good job of not going too over the top like if she released all of that all the projections and immediately there were riots on the streets people tearing down buildings i would have thought that's a little bit too far here they very much focused on the individual reactions and some of them were pretty awful i think there was one where a mother sees her daughter's future projection and it says suicide wrist injury and you see the mother grab her daughter's wrist so they showed you some that were like you said comical and then in the jarring nature of this episode two seconds later you get a a one second flash of the most awful thing you can imagine and uh, it's a good point you bring up i mean i i've kind of just felt like the twist that this is all taking place in a simulation or it's all taking place in god forbid a future world park or something like that I've just taken it for granted that's not the case, but they have talked, they've introduced the element of a simulation, and we hadn't seen that until this season, I think, or we saw elements of it last season, so they've got the idea of a simulation, you've got this big globe that we know is playing out, many projections of how reality can go, so they've definitely introduced the elements that if they go that route, that there is some sort of twist, you can't exactly say it's unfair, but something about it just feels like that would be sort of over the top, but we'll right. See. And I mean, I think they'll do something like I don't think it would be as straightforward as that. In the same way that you know, which uh, which other hosts did she bring was a predictable like it, we were going to be swerved somehow in that, but they ended up swerving us in a way that we didn't see coming. Like I assume there will be some you know next level way of them doing it it's not just going to be like oh this whole thing was a projection of we haven't actually progressed past uh the first day of (laughs) season one of westworld jimmy simpson is still on the train or something you know i like i don't think it's it's going to be that cheap of a um you know the whole show takes place inside a snow globe kind of thing right right but uh you know it does seem i don't know there was there was a there was a it's too easy kind of feel to it right exactly And uh, yeah, it felt like when she gets a hold of Liam and uh, he's trying to describe how difficult it will be to get in there and actually be able to access the system. The the only way you can do it is if you get to a node. And it felt like within 10 minutes, they'd broken in, they'd gotten there, boom, it's all released. It felt a little bit too easy, but with the way technology is wired into every aspect of that world in 2058, and the fact that this is three months after Dolores got out of the park, and my feeling is that this is a, she's been planning this stuff for a while. So where it seems fast for us, it might also just be the fact that she has so meticulously planned everything that's happened that we're just in the execution phase now. 
Right. And, and that, did, that does remind me there's that, sorry to interrupt that there, there was that line when you're talking about the nodes thing, when uh, Liam basically sets it up perfectly when he's like, but in order to do that, you'd have to be in two places at once, which was a little corny, but it did make me smile at the same time. So I, I can't say for sure if I, if I hated it as much as my gut wanted me to, but it was a, I wrote it down. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> when Jeremy writes it down, you know, the show did something, something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of Dolores' plan, though, I'm assuming this is not the culmination of her plan, right? There's more to it. We know that Bernard, it seems pretty clear at this point, Bernard still has some role to play. And there's no mistake that Dolores brought him back. I know that Bernard has suspected in the past that the reason Dolores brought him back, he thought to himself, maybe she's afraid he'll go too far. My feeling at this point is that it's... I, I can't imagine she'd bring him back for that reason. I think he is going to play a specific role in whatever her grander plan is. And Connell's makes a, a, a comment about that later in the episode. Now, so there's more to her plan. What else do you think she's after? Because if her goal is truly just to free humanity and not destroy humanity like it seemed to be you know, last season, she would sort of have already accomplished that by now, right? She hasn't destroyed Sarak. She hasn't taken down Insight. But by putting all that information into the world, you can't really put the genie back in the bottle. There's no way Sarak can tell people, hey, forget about your uh, projections. Forget about all of that. You know, just go on with your lives and we'll just uh, go back to being the puppet masters. So what do you think her plan is? What are your theories on what she's actually after? What's the next phase of her grand plan? Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that's that seems like the million dollar question at this point. I I don't really know, which kind of still makes me think maybe we were seeing a uh, a simulation in in some aspects because maybe it's like that couldn't have actually happened yet because what else could she want? Because I can't see her. I don't know. Even though she is very vengeful, obviously, I can't see her having like a more petty goal, um, which could be the only other thing I would think of, like something super personal against. You know, I don't know if there is a way to get Ford back involved again or wherever he I assume he, he will somehow end up playing some role and maybe it's some shot at him. I, but I don't know. It's it's a good question. Yeah, my my suspicion for the last few episodes has been that whatever Dolores says, it's manipulation. She's manip manipulating Caleb into helping her. And at the end of her day, at the end of the day, in season two, her stated goal pretty unambiguously was destroy humanity. And then I caught one line in this episode where Dempsey Sr. in the Ciroc flashbacks, Dempsey Sr. tells Ciroc he's going to tell the world what Rehoboam is and what they're doing. Ciroc says that every projection they've done, they've done millions of projections where Dempsey does that and they all lead to mankind's extinction. So it seemed to me that in this very episode, they told us that revealing Rehoboam leads to mankind's extinction. So if Dolores' plan is human genocide, it would make sense that this would be one step in that plan. So I'm at least putting my money on that. Xavier Lee in the chat says it couldn't be that simple and easy. And to be fair, nothing in this show ever is. So there may be more to it than that. But whatever it is, I think it's going to be in that ballpark. That makes a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, that, that's a good point. Good observations on those on those scenes. What did you think of those scenes, by the way? Like, like the, the Dempsey yeah. character seemed to slightly one dimensional, but I, I don't know. And also I couldn't, I found myself questioning the whole time. Like who is Ciroc talking to when he's telling this story? And I, I think I, this might be the, the first one that I feel like I really need to rewatch to write a couple more things down as I'm watching specifically what stuff did we get right after those accessing file, uh, you know, slates that right. we were shown, like, was he talking to Dolores in the conversation that we saw at the end of this episode? Mm. I, I don't, I like, I, I want to look back at that again, because at first it sounded like he was maybe talking to uh, the computer, but mm -hmm. then maybe he was talking to the brother, but he wasn't. And I, I don't know, there was a lot, there was a lot going on to, to go back and, uh, and rewatch. I think. Yeah. I think it was in terms of who he was talking to. I think it was a mix Throughout the episode, it's he spoke as though he were talking to Rehoboam. He said, this is why I created you. It seemed like that's who he was talking to. And it made me wonder if the computer has some kind of an AI aspect to it where you could talk to it. 
or if it was more metaphorical. He was almost speaking to the computer, but really he was speaking his thoughts aloud. And overall, what did I think of the Ciroc backstory and all his flashbacks? Honestly, in principle, I didn't hate any of it, you know, on paper, but I kind of hated the execution of it. So getting into that, I guess a couple things to pick out from Ciroc's backstory. One, we learn a little bit about how Rehoboam actually goes about controlling the world. I think in the cold open, we see how Ciroc will interact with world leaders directly. He'll help them get elected and then therefore be able to influence them. And then, of course, we also learn that they alter individual people like he tried to do with his own brother. Going into Ciroc's backstory himself, right, we already knew Paris got destroyed. That was his home, which causes all this doubt in humanity. Him and his brother decide they essentially need to become gods and chart humanity's course. Now, his brother, learning that he needs to edit his brother, the revelation that his brother is one of those people that disturbs humanity's plan, should be a pretty emotionally devastating development. But his character was basically, Sirach's brother was essentially a non-entity. We barely see him talk. He whispers at one point, hey, that uh, Dempsey guy, we should kill that guy. But other than that, You know, they always say in screenwriting, you want to show, not tell. Ciroc's backstory felt like 90% telling instead of showing. That was sort of my main complaint with it. The Dempsey Sr. character, Ciroc's brother, they felt like such non-entities that were just there to to be on screen while Ciroc was explaining everything to us. Yeah, I uh, I I definitely agree with that, and I kept like flip flopping this episode too. It's like, are we supposed to feel, you know, sympathy towards him? Which at first it seems like maybe you are because of this story with the brother, and he learns from the brother, but then it flips pretty quickly um, because it, you know, he's he's obviously very manipulative, especially that scene you talked about with uh, whatever world leader he is meeting with there. The other thing uh, from that scene, whereas last week it was, a, or maybe two weeks ago, I can't remember, was slightly ambiguous when he put the glasses on the uh, hostage guy that he that he ends up killing before he gets the information from, where he was saying, I'm just showing him the future if he does or doesn't cooperate. There was kind of this element of like, oh, is he telling the truth? Probably not, but you don't know. And this time it seemed like it was pretty clear. He wasn't just saying, oh, I can help you predict the future, but I'm, I'm going to be able to directly affect it, including you know ruining your life and, and mm-hmm. stealing your wife and kids in the middle of the night and all that stuff. So he immediately flips from, do we have any questions of, you know, is this guy doing the right thing or not to like, oh, no, we're definitely not supposed to like this guy, bad guy, all about power. Right. Right. Well, it's definitely uh, similar to what you and I hit on the last time we spoke. He's a Thanos like villain, right, where in principle, he's trying to save humanity or he's trying to save all life in the universe, but he's going about it in a totally horrifying way. And at times we see these very cold moments like the one you mentioned where he shoots the guy in the head after showing him an image of his family being destroyed. So if you're feeling doubts about, should I like this guy, feel bad for him, or should I hate him? I think that's exactly what Westworld wants you to feel. Um, The other thing that I thought was kind of corny with him was the, there's like, it happens, I think twice in this episode where like Dolores does something and he has this very like, uh, 80s or 90s action movie reaction of like hitting his table when it doesn't go the way that he wanted it to. They're like, sir, she got all of them. Oh, God, damn. you know, and he does, does that kind of thing, which I thought was a little, I don't know, it just seemed hokier than what I want out of like a this this Westworld bad guy right. who's supposed to be making me question is he even that bad or not. Um, maybe it leaned a little too much on the corny side for me there. But again, this is like a weird gut reaction. I'm sure I'm, I'm going to think about the episode for another hour and then decide I, it's the best one, actually, not the worst one. Yeah, you'll frantically call me. Yo, we got, we got to get back on the live stream. I was wrong. <laughs> I loved all the Ciroc stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like the information we got out of the Ciroc backstory. Didn't love that section of the episode, but I actually quite liked just about everything else with uh, Caleb and uh, the rest of what we saw this episode. I think one more um, tidbit I want to pull out of the Ciroc backstory is uh, And I think this was already revealed in some of the supplementary marketing material, but you and I talked about Rehoboam, where that name comes from. It's a biblical name. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. And in this uh, episode, in the flashbacks, they talk about what is this version called? And they say, first was Saul, then David, this version is Solomon. 
So we do learn that there was a version of the device before Rehoboam titled Solomon. So the biblical references were not limited just to this version. So going back to um, Dolores and Caleb, one question that's loomed for me throughout these episodes is, will someone betray Dolores? And I think there were a couple of hints at that this episode. One, we see actually two or three hints. We see at the end of the episode, before they get on the plane, Caleb is hesitant. He says to Dolores, maybe people shouldn't have seen what we showed them. Also, earlier in the episode, Liam says to Caleb, she was using me. How do you think she's using you? And even further, we see Bernard ask Connells if he's had any doubts about Dolores' plan and whether or not he really wants to go along with all of it. Plus, we've seen Charlotte. We've seen all of her struggles. So do you think that one of Dolores' Dolores hosts are going to betray her? Do we think Caleb is going to betray her? Uh, what do you think about all that? Yeah, I mean, I, they definitely planted the seeds for it in, in all the cases you mentioned there, um, especially the the Caleb moment with Liam in the tunnel where he seems to, like, right as soon as that happens, too, is also when he tells him that, like, you think I hurt you thing or whatever before he gives him the drug, right. which uh, leads to all the weird stuff later. Um, but, yeah, I think that's definitely a factor. I'm, I'm wondering, like, do we know what of Dolores' weakness could be, and is that one of them, like, thinking that she is able to sway people or even herself more than he was? Because Bernard, I think, says the most um, – you know, West worldy and important type thing about that. When he says the, like, you know, it's not easy to be car eyes bleed into others. I'm sure you've experienced it like that, that whole kind of great line. Bernard impression, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, my other favorite Bernard line was when he just as a quick aside is when he's, uh, says, I think I'm a part of it. That was my other favorite Bernard, mm -hmm. uh, moment, classic <laughs> confused Bernard. Um, but yeah, I think they, I think they, they, they planted all the seeds for one or more or all of the hosts to, to try to betray, uh, original, not original, but whatever Dolores version mm -hmm. of Dolores, which I, we still don't even really know if Dolores Dolores is that one or is right. Charlotte Dolores, 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 you know? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of I, I like what they're setting up where one of the or several of the Dolores uh, hosts might turn on her. And by the way, I love how dejected you sound. Just trying to figure out the show. You're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just too much to think about. It's positive dejection, though. It's good. Yeah, like it's exactly it. what we want from this show. I, I love what they're setting up with the Dolores host to potentially betray original Dolores. The one thing I'm not sure I how, how I feel about yet is is it seems like the doubts that the Dolores hosts are having, that doesn't come from them just being an independent person coming up with their own thoughts and having doubts. It seems like it's coming more from the body, right? Bernard says that when you share your host mind with a human and start to live their lives, their lives sort of start to creep in. We saw that with Charlotte as well, where Dolores in Charlotte's body almost feels the Charlotte mind taking over. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. I want to see how it plays out, but I find it much more interesting if it's literally a clone of Dolores' consciousness, and for some reason, they just decide to go a different way. And then there's the whole question of consciousness, nature versus nurture, what caused them to go one way versus the other. So that's actually what uh, Xavier Lee in the chat is, uh, is getting to. That's just so wild. Imagine the concept of going against your own will and support gaming 2020. So, bet so Dolores betrays herself, LOL. But exactly, I think that'd be a pretty interesting concept to explore. So we'll see where they go with all that. And I mean, there's so many different layers of people like betraying themselves within the show, you know, whether you're talking about um, uh, William, uh, uh, you know, killing his daughter uh, because he didn't realize what was going on. Like, there's so many different ways that people have already betrayed themselves. Someone betraying themselves isn't a foreign concept necessarily, uh, but obviously it gets really weird when you're talking about, you know, no, it's a different version of the same person it's it's sort of like a like an external version of running multiple simulations you know oh well this Dolores right. went this way but this Dolores went the other way which I agree with you I think that is more interesting if it's just two of the same Dolores is going to two different paths rather than oh no this Dolores was manipulated because uh she was half thinking she was Charlotte missing her kid or, or whatever right right 
Yeah, so we'll see where they go with that. I mean, part of the part the the Charlotte injecting into Dolores's mind question could be interesting if they explore well what particular aspects of Charlotte caused Dolores to go the way she did. Was it the love of her child? Was it a certain memory? Was it something else? So either way, it could be interesting. But gut reaction, um, it seems less interesting to me that way. But we'll see. Uh, let's talk about Caleb. So. Ever since Caleb's mother, I think in episode one, actually, said to him, you're not my son, or something along those lines, I chalked it up to his mother is senile, she's losing her mind, people on the internet were saying, hold on, that might be a hint that this Caleb is a host, and I thought, insane, crazy, no way, but this episode, we do get some pretty overt hints that there's at least something going on with Caleb, so... When Liam gets shot and Caleb goes to help him, Liam seems afraid of Caleb, and Caleb keeps having to reassure him, I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you. Then we get some odd flashbacks where Caleb has a mask over his eyes, where he has a hood over someone's head, almost like he's kidnapping or interrogating that person. And Caleb starts to ask Dolores, who does he think I am? And then Liam, who do you think I am? And Liam says, as he dies, you did it. You did it. So, any thoughts on what here is happening with Caleb? Uh, my first reaction is I think I maybe also have to start watching the show with closed captioning on because I <laughs> definitely did not tell that he could not tell that he said you did it at the end there. Um, I also did specifically write down the quote, who does he think I am? Because it's such an absurd, like weird thing that only happens in Westworld <laughs> where it's a twist that we're, it's not a twist. Who is he? It's not a twist. What time is it? Or are we in a simulation or is he a host or not? It's who does he think that I am? And that he's saying may be to the a different first person. time <laughs> that may be the first time in television history that <laughs> sentence has been uttered who does he think i am <laughs> <laughs> with that with that like kind of intense uh intensity yeah I don't, I don't know it's it's um i mean he obviously has some kind of a past that he doesn't remember which has something to do with maybe being shot and then implanted with whatever kind of thing where he is talking to a imitation of his former you know comrade or associate mm -hmm. or, or whatever kid Cuddy uh was um I, I don't like it's 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 right on the line like this show is luckily good at having so many different things going on because normally like I find that specific trope a little annoying where it's just like I can't remember my pet and I know it sounds insane because it happens with every character in the show <laughs> and how could I be saying that but that specific way I, I I don't know but I mean yeah there's there's going to be obvious some kind of massive dramatic character reveal related to Caleb. And I think it's going to go back to the thing that we were talking about last weekend and all the previous weeks, like that Dolores being involved with him is certainly not an accident aside from the fact that he is, seems to be one of these like outliers that, that, you know, Serac and co have, have detected, but probably something that she knew too. There's some extra thing that he has related to this past that he, uh, you know, somewhat annoyingly, conveniently doesn't remember. Right, right. And I think the why doesn't he remember it? Why does his mother look at him and say, you're not my son? I don't think it's that he's a host, but they did in this episode show us that insight will take individual humans that are somehow a, an, an issue for humanity's path forward and will quote unquote edit them. So I'm assuming that Caleb or is or my guess is that he is one of these people that has been edited and changed by insight. And maybe part of that change is locking certain memories away from him, changing certain aspects of his personality. So if that's the case, the question is, who was he before? And what is his importance to all this? I'm assuming it's no mistake that Dolores drafted him to this cause. So... And Liam knew who he was. And I don't know. It didn't seem to me like Liam just looked up who Caleb was and learned his backstory quickly. It seemed like Caleb was somehow important to Rehoboam, important to Insight. And I'm assuming it's going to be tied into whatever role Dolores plans for him in, in all of this. 
it's just seemed like that's another one of those things though like if it was something crazy you know i'm i'm spitballing but within this show that that always seems semi-realistic caleb is some reincarnation of serac's brother or something like that you know uh, that they that they worked on in one of those little lab things which look uh you know suspiciously similar to the stuff that we see inside westworld where the scientists um you know adjust the hosts because you're supposed to be you know again with this whole like how much is the real world like the westworld thing where you take the outliers back into the lab and readjust them and conform them to what you need to fit the narrative that you're trying to write i just don't like don't you think that that he would have just said it like why wouldn't liam have just said what it was that he because i agree with you he probably read like a little quick byline and went like oh shit this is that guy right i know who that guy is i didn't realize it was him that seemed like what the reaction was but i like why wouldn't he have just said it there you know yeah yeah and uh i hate to go to this but i feel like the answer to that is they're not ready to reveal that mystery to us yet so you know in, in the plot context you could argue that he was just shot the last thing on his mind, he might not be all that interested in helping Caleb out. It seems like his first reaction was terror. He was afraid of him. So he might not have been in the right mindset to explain who Caleb actually is. Or earlier, I mean, I don't know earlier in the episode, I guess there were opportunities. It might not have been clear to him how much Cal actually knew or remembered. But uh, we'll have to revisit it once we get the bombshell revelation. And judging by how fast this season is moving with the revelation of mysteries, it could be next episode that all of this is answered. And then we can look back at it and see how we feel about it. He strikes me as a season long mystery because it's a new character. Like, I feel like that's the it's it's a it's a meta um, season long version of what's the Star Trek thing with the where they introduce a new guy and you know that he's going to be the, you know, the um, the uh, red shirts. Yes, 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 exactly. He's like a season long uh, version version of that where his they can do the most with him because he's a brand new character. So I feel like that's going to be a uh, second to last episode, although I guess at this point uh, we're, we're basically are near the true. end. So it could be at, a, at any moment. Only three episodes left and uh, support gaming 2020 has a theory in the chat. He says plot twist. Caleb is William. It's another 30 year timeline. Uh, alternate timeline, maybe. I don't know, Jeremy, what do you think of this theory? <laughs> Caleb is William. So Caleb is William in future world. Like William leaves Westworld, goes to future world, does a facial redesign in the same way that we saw Caleb try on all those different suits in that other episode. I mean, look, it, like it def. I don't think it's, but nothing seems impossible in this show, especially, and they seem to set up the grounds for new impossible things every week like with with Ciroc in this episode doing a lot of the uh like he's being projected in places even to people that aren't wearing the glasses which seems like it was yeah. a new thing this episode like he's doing a very um uh mysterio from the most recent um <laughs> spider-man film where he can be anywhere and it looks very real except for the very last scene where dolores walks through him that was the only one where he seemed to be very uh, uh like look transparent and pivot in weird ways before but at that point i right. knew he you know, wasn't actually there. Yeah, um, so yeah. I don't know. I guess c- could could be. Yeah, it's been uh, unclear to me the uh, exact rules with the holograms and the glasses because my assumption, based off of what we saw in episode one and since then, is that to see these holograms, you've got to be wearing the glasses and it has a sort of augmented reality feature. Now, I, I actually... I don't remember every time we've seen Serac as a hologram interacting with somebody... Has it always been with a host and therefore they themselves are a computer and he could create a projection? Or have we seen him in hologram form interacting with an actual human? Oh, that's a good point, because definitely in this episode, the scene I was thinking of was a host looking at him. Um... I'll have to think about it because we do see Serac in the airplane interacting with the hologram when the uh, when Connells blows himself up. We see Serac right. look at that hologram blow into pieces. So that theory might be shot. That's one of the times that he bangs the table, I think. That's right. That's right. The uh, closed caption said groans. And then I heard this like ah! sound. <laughs> Lifestyle right. engineering in the chat says, I felt like they wanted to put an action scene into the season and they did it in this episode. But I feel like that took away from the depth and did not contribute anything to character development or general epicness. I actually didn't mind the action in this episode. I think mainly because they had the genre filter over it. So 
when Ride of the Valkyrie kicked in, I laughed. I don't think it added a whole lot to the episode, uh, except for maybe just furthering the feeling of Caleb as a passenger just sort of going along with this whole plan. But I didn't mind it too much in this episode. It did lend itself to that really cool uh, overhead shot, like an aerial view of when they're all the three of them are sitting in the car before she hands him the gun. That was a really cool shot. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And uh, a couple other things in the chat. I see um, somebody was asking. I can't can't find it now, but um, Xavier Lee or uh, somebody was a little bit confused about the whole situation with Charlotte having Dolores's mind in her body. How is it that the Charlotte personality is taking over? It's not like there's a Charlotte soul in there. It's not like Charlotte is a host where you can take her personality and stick it in there. So how is it that the Charlotte personality is taking over? I don't think we have a complete answer to that, but we know that the Bernard we see this season has a version of Arnold in his mind. And the way that was pulled off is Dolores tells Bernard, I remember Arnold. I used my memories of him to recreate an Arnold mind, essentially, and stick it in your body. So I think although there's no way to just extract a human soul, there are ways to observe a human and do your best to recreate their personality. And I think that's what they did with Charlotte. They stuck the Charlotte personality in there, and it helps the Dolores mind play the role. She can pull on those, she can pull in the Charlotte personality when she has to and play the role. I think that's what they're getting at. All right. Uh, any other thoughts, Jeremy? I think actually I've got a few other random thoughts I wanted to mention. Number one, when they get to the pier, they get to the beach, the, uh, and, um, Caleb's genre kicks in with a song from the shining. I just love that pop culture reference. Just having that play there. Um, uh, I love Stubbs, even though he's really just, it feels like he's just there for comedic relief. But his, what the F just happened in there? And what the F is going on out here? Uh, also, uh, poor Liam. As much as he is the son of uh, Dempsey Sr., who didn't seem like the best person, he sort of feels like a victim of just, he was born into this. He kind of just got bounced around between a bunch of nonsense. Didn't really have a whole lot of say in everything that happened. You know, he was sort of a bystander. Didn't go out of his way to, uh, to stop anything. But I felt a little bit bad for him. Also, uh, Matt Palomba in the chat says, Ciroc was pretty strong for a human, no? And uh, Jeremy, did you have the same reaction I did when he grabbed Dempsey Sr.'s head and slammed it onto the, the piece of airplane? That felt a little bit, like, too easy? Uh, I, no, I didn't. I mean, I'm definitely, <laughs> de do not get me wrong here, I'm definitely on board with Ciroc is not, you know, who we think he is, but that that didn't strike me as, like, a... A superhuman moment um to jump back to Stubbs really quick where did he come from in that moment when he like walks out of the hall just in the nick of time to punch the guy in the face Dolores in the face like where wh that was the biggest like wait what was he just in a closet waiting for that to happen he pops out of the door can and it and it completely flips the odds they get him handcuffed or whatever yeah uh, as soon as we saw Bernard this episode I kept trying to remember where we last left Stubbs I know that when he fought Dolores, he got thrown over the balcony, and I couldn't remember if he showed up again later in the episode. So when he just arrives, <laughs> just in the nick of time, I just imagine there's this whole side plot we missed of Bernard or Serac just trying to catch up with Bernard. It's kind of like when you have a Roomba that's trying to get back to its docking station. <laughs> and it just keeps bumping into stuff, finding its way there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or to, to, to bounce to our other uh, topic, it's like in uh, episode uh, two of The Mandalorian when uh, Baby Yoda's in the tiny little thing and he just keeps chasing him in spite of uh, <laughs> he jumps on top of the Jawa crawler and you're worried that he's left him behind, but he just plugs along. He's right there. Wow, that is such a great call. Stubbs <laughs> is the Baby Yoda of Westworld this season. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, also, uh, I thought about William and just what role is he going to play in all this? And I don't have a, a lot to say there besides I w as soon as I saw people locked up in those little containers where they were being edited, right? You compared that to where they would take the hosts to edit them before putting them back into Westworld. The other thing I thought of in that moment was where we last left William. He was in a mental institution of some sort, and I wondered if 
he will go he will undergo some sort of editing as well will insight target him and uh, i don't know if it's just a surface level similarity where he's locked up and those people are locked up or there is something to that yeah it's an interesting question i think he's different because i think uh based on what you know Dolores did Charlotte Dolores did to him. I, I think he's she just wanted him fully uh, off the map. So I'm I'm sure that she looked into a way to make that happen. But I, I don't know. I mean, he'll. I certainly do not think that we have seen the last of him or or felt the last of his uh, reverberations through the through the universe. Anyway. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's kind of funny to think only three episodes left, and we've barely seen the William character. It's pretty interesting. Uh, any other thoughts on tonight's episode? Um, let me just do a quick once over on the notes here. I, I don't think so though. I think, uh, I think we hit all the, um, all the high notes. Yeah. I think we hit all the, Oh, you know what I wrote down when they, uh, when they first get in the little, uh, self-drive Uber thing that she calls over that w- in that little chase scene, I think before she gives them the guns and it gets really crazy. They like make a hard right down one of the streets. I did notice a street sign that said hope, uh, on oh. it, like that that was the street that they turned down, which at first I thought was like a cool little subtle thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they have a dialogue later near the end of the episode where they specifically use the word hope like three or four times. So, uh, maybe it wasn't as as cool and subtle as I as I thought it was, but um. it's funny because that that might have seeped into my subconscious because one of the things I've been thinking about, and a few folks mentioned it in the chat here, is if you're watching Debs right now on Hulu, it's pretty astounding how similar these shows are. On the surface, they're not that similar. They're very different genres. I mean, they're both sci-fi, but they feel very different. But they're exploring so many of the same themes except that Westworld has ever so slightly a little bit more hope than devs on Westworld. I have some question over whether or not we're going to win. It feels like there's a shot. Humanity might come out of this in a better spot than they're in now. Uh, But uh, that could just be that street sign and those mentions of the word seeping into uh, my subconscious. (laughs) (laughs) I anyway, I gotta watch Devs, I guess. Yeah, you gotta check out Devs. It's uh, I think you'd like it. If you enjoy theorizing and you like delving into these themes, I definitely recommend it. Uh, anyway, so I think with that, we're just about ready to wrap up. So quick reminder that this was our instant take. This was just our quick reactions to the episode. But in the next two or three days, we will do a full recap and analysis. We'll go scene by scene. So if you're enjoying that video, make sure enjoying this video. You will enjoy that video. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video or the next time we go live so you can be a part of the conversation. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next One Take.